We are heading directly into winter virus season. Uh, the flu is already here. RSV is here. And of course, uh, I was going to call them our old friend COVID, but still a relatively new companion for us also here. And the timing might not be great. So I wanted to go to uh, my favorite infectious disease expert, Dr. Helen Chu with the University of Washington. Doctor, thanks for taking a few minutes to join us. Really appreciate that. And I want to start with the flu. Uh, and really, I think the big question is, how bad of a season are we looking at, considering that we you know, sort of avoided the flu for a couple of years? Looks like it might not be too good of a season this time around. Yeah, it's hard to predict what the season will look like in the United States, but sometimes we look at the Southern Hemisphere and see what happened there. So in Australia this year, they had a very early um, flu season and it started early and affected the young kids. And then it peaked um, at much higher levels than had been seen in the last two years. And we know in the US, though flu does not seem to be here yet in large numbers, we know that in parts of the United States, including the Southeast, in Georgia, in Texas, um, in the mid-Atlantic states, that flu levels are very, very high. And usually that comes one to two months later. So we're expecting that we'll probably see flu earlier this year than we have in the past. Yes, I was on uh, Thursday's Department of Health briefing and was surprised to learn that we've already had two flu deaths here in Washington. So it's uh, at the very least, we know it's definitely already here, even though it might be just starting its spread. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Australia, because uh, in talking to our friend Dr. Mokdad recently, he was telling me about how not only that they had the spike in Australia, New Zealand, but that it happened very quickly, much more quickly than we normally expect. So what's the sense among you and your colleagues and others in your field about how quickly flu will, will come on this season? It's probably going to do the same. There's a lot of people in the community who haven't seen flu for two years now. And so the amount of uh, population immunity, so the amount that we can be protected from other people being immune, that's really gone down. So the chances of it spreading very quickly is very high. I mean, the one thing I would say is that we know that the flu that was circulating in Australia was a good match to the flu vaccine that was given there. And we're using the same flu vaccine here now so that that vaccine seems to be protective against the flu that was circulating. Well, I'm glad you brought up the vaccine, and I know we've we've talked about this before, but I want to revisit it. As I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's three components that are essentially the same each year, and then we add to it uh, what we what we know was going around. Is that right? I should let the expert explain it rather than me doing it. Yeah, that's right. You're really good at remembering the conversations we've had in the past. Yeah, so um, there are four parts to the flu vaccine. There are two flu Bs and two flu As. Three of them don't really change um, that much year to year. And then the fourth part, which is the H3N2, the seasonal flu A, that's the part that we have to make decisions about every year. And this year, at least in Australia, it seems to be a good match to what they're seeing in the community. So that's good for us because we are using that same flu vaccine here. Well, thank goodness for that because I'm pretty excited. I finally got an appointment. I'm getting my flu shot Sunday morning. Couldn't come soon enough for sure. And that's another thing I wanted to revisit from previous conversations because I remember you telling me that because sometimes here in the Northwest flu will come a little bit later, that right now sort of October is the, the window with the timing the way it is or the way it seems like it will be this year, does that change at all? It means that you should probably get your flu vaccine as soon as possible. I got mine last month and usually I wait until the end of October because I was worried about what was coming. And would you tell us again why we want to time it the way we do? Yeah, so it takes about two weeks for you to get um, your immune response to your flu vaccine and for it to be protective. And we normally see flu peak in Seattle around December, January, but this year we expect it to peak early. So you really want that dose in 
and have the two weeks to mount that immune response before flu arrives at high levels in the region. And that's also because it only lasts for so long too. So you want to time it so that the protection is there when you need it, right? That's right. So it lasts for about six months. Um, and so if we do have an early flu season, which is what we expect, getting it now will protect you until the flu season ends. Oh, goodness. It is a it is a scary prospect, but a, a very good advice, certainly, to make sure to get that flu shot right away, especially since uh, people are getting it. So it's tough to get appointments. So definitely a good piece of advice, I think, to make sure that you get on it and get those appointments right away. Now, let's move on to, if we can, to respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. Uh, and we know that this one is already hammering kids pretty hard. We're seeing uh, Seattle Children's and Mary Bridge talking about a, a whole slew of ER visits, and they're filling up fast with these kids with, with RSV. What should we, as a society, not necessarily parents, what should we be thinking about as RSV makes its way around? So I think the main thing to think about is that uh, it's, again, a very early RSV season, a very severe RSV season, um, and that that will lead to the hospitals being full and unable to handle other cases as they come in. So the best thing that we can do as, as a society is to do the things that, that we've been doing for the last several years. So masking when sick, distancing when sick, staying home when sick, washing your hands, cleaning surfaces. Those are the same things that will prevent the spread of RSV, um, just like they did for flu and for COVID. So flu and COVID we're familiar with. I mean, we are hearing the term RSV and we know it's going around. What can you tell me about the disease itself? Oh yeah, so RSV is a virus. It's a respiratory virus. It causes um, disease both in young children and also in older adults. So the way that you'll know that you have RSV, um, so you have you develop a cough, a runny nose, it very rapidly moves on into your lungs and you have trouble breathing, you have wheezing. Um, Symptom-wise, it's very, very hard to distinguish from flu and from COVID, so you really do need testing. And we know for very, very young children, what happens is that they develop something called bronchiolitis. So they get an inflammation of their small airways, and that leads them to have to go to the hospital and get oxygen and go to the ICU. And you mentioned that it really hits kids and older adults hard. What about the rest of us in the middle? It hits us too, um, certainly, but it doesn't cause us to end up in the hospital in the intensive care unit. So I think for older adults, especially those who are older than 65 and those with lung disease or heart disease, we know that RSV has a burden that's actually very similar to seasonal flu, that in those adults, they get quite sick from RSV and they end up having to go into the hospital. Can it be as deadly as the flu at times? Yes, definitely. Scary prospect for sure. And of course, no vaccine for RSV, is there? Well, there isn't right now, but there are several vaccines that are in clinical trials. And we actually expect that there will be a vaccine for RSV, hopefully within the next one to two years, both for infants and then also for older adults. Is it going to be a similar situation where we'll have to keep adjusting the vaccine based on mutations of the virus? It's hard to know right now. Um, the virus doesn't mutate as quickly as flu or as quickly as COVID. So it may be that you'll get one vaccine and then you'll get the same vaccine every year. It's also not clear how long the immune response from the vaccine will last yet. So those, those studies are happening right now and we'll have more information over the next several months. But I anticipate what's gonna happen is that we're going to get seasonal vaccines for flu, for RSV and for COVID. Are they using the same uh, mRNA technology to develop the RSV the vaccine? Yeah, so there's a couple of different technologies. One of them is the mRNA technology. They're also doing the adenovirus technology like they did with the adenovirus um, COVID vaccines. They're also just simple protein vaccines like we've given for lots of other diseases in the past. So there's four or five different ways that people are designing vaccines for RSV. So the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Go with what we know will probably work and 
try the new stuff too. I think that's a, I think that's a good idea. So I have also talked, let's move on to COVID here a little bit because you know, we have talked about COVID ad nauseum for, well, it'll be three years in March now. So really not that far off. Hard to believe that we're this far in and, and still dealing with it. Um, again, among you and your colleagues, what's the sense of what we're looking at here in our area in terms of a winter COVID season? I think the idea is that there will be a winter COVID season that COVID is turning into a seasonal respiratory virus. And we're going to see a winter surge in the same way that we see the winter surges of all the other viruses. The big unknown of course, is whether or not there will be a new variant that emerges that's going to evade the immune response that we've developed to the prior variants that circulated. But I think no matter what, we will see cases go up in the winter and the booster will provide you immunity because it'll boost your antibody titers and keep you from getting sick and getting hospitalized and dying from COVID. So it's unpredictable as COVID has been, but most likely there will be a winter surge and the best thing you can do is to get vaccinated. Well, here's another area where I want to give our listeners some advice because I also finally managed to get an appointment for my bivalent booster. It'll be Shot number five for me, and I can't get it soon enough, but I had to wait a couple of weeks when I made the appointment for the date. So even though we have plenty of vaccine, Department of Health confirmed that we have a steady supply coming, we have more than enough to cover everybody, the timing of the appointments is where the lag is. So definitely something if you are interested in getting the, uh, whether it's a regular booster or, or well, now they're just giving the bivalent booster, or if you need to give your, get your first shots because you haven't gotten them yet, make that appointment right away because you're still going to have to wait a couple of weeks to get it. So I want to go back to timing, doctor, because we talked about this and it sounds like all three of these things could really hit us hard all at once. Is that what we're expecting? Yes, it is very possible that we'll see flu, RSV, and COVID all surge at the exact same time, and that will overwhelm our hospitals. What's the word going around at UW Medicine? Are they prepared? Because I know Harborview is already full. Uh, where I am up in Snohomish County, uh, in, in Everett, uh, Providence is pretty full still. Uh, are, are they ready to take on a surge there at, at UW Medicine? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not uh, really based at UW Medicine most of the time, but um, I do know that we get our situation reports from the hospital and they're bracing. They're bracing for the upcoming surge. So what do you think? Uh, are we looking at a situation where we might have a few weeks where it's all hitting us at once? And even though there won't be any mandates, we might tell everybody to kind of take it easy and stay away from each other or, or, I mean, oh, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to predict what's going to happen. I think it's, it's going to be one of those things where, you know, there's a lot of things that are unknown right now. So are they all going to come at the same time? Is RSV going to come first and then we're going to have a wave of flu and then we're going to have the wave of COVID. What is the going to be the uptake of the booster and the flu vaccine in the community? Because we know that the more boosters and the more flu vaccines we get in, the less likely we will overwhelm the hospitals. Those are pretty unpredictable at this point. But we know from prior years that uh, when all the viruses happen at the same time, it puts significant strain on the hospitals but we can do what we can to stop that, right? So if people get their vaccines and they stay home when they're sick and they do the things that they need to do, then we can we can dampen that curve. Yeah, and that's a, another thing that personally concerned me when I was listening to that Department of Health briefing was that, you know, we know that maybe 40 to 50% vaccination rate for the flu, and right now it's it's far less than that for the bivalent booster. And we know those, you know, we maybe get to five, six months of protection max out of those, which is why we not only get the winter wave, but we'll be probably seeing summer waves too as the uh, immunity starts to wane. But, uh, you know, I think it's another good reminder to, uh, you know, make sure you get those things and time them right and, and protect yourself if you can, because those hospitals are going to be full and you don't want to be one of the people that's on a gurney out in the hallway 
right. you know, getting treated because they're overflowing. Not to mention, we've talked a bunch about hospital staffing issues. They're struggling with that still. So uh, it's a, a, a lot of things to be concerned about. Uh, what's your sense of how the holidays are going to be with all of that in mind, Dr. Chu? Oh, I mean, I think you do what you can to protect yourself and to protect those around you, right? So you test before you gather, you get your vaccines, you mask when you travel. There are lots of things that you can do to keep from getting others sick and to keep from getting sick yourself. And I think we do what we can, but it's going to be a, I think it's going to be an unpredictable season this year. All right. Very good. Is there anything I haven't thought of that you need to add? No, I think you did a good job. Um, I think that I think your point about the burnout, the staff burnout, the low staffing in the hospitals, that's that's going to be a big issue as well in the in the winter. So I'm 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 worried about what's going to happen. You know, what happens when this type of when we have these types of surges is that other procedures get delayed and people who need to get seen for other things aren't able to get seen for their strokes, for their heart attacks, for their other issues. All of the hospital capacity gets strained and then you're not able to care for the emergencies that come in. And so the best thing we can do is to do our best to keep from getting sick and overwhelming the hospitals with these things that are vaccine preventable. Well, now that you mentioned heart attacks and strokes, makes me glad I'm also on a statin drug. <laughs> so less less likely to have that problem. And fingers crossed the, the shots will, will do me a favor and, and keep me away from the hospital. Uh, Dr. Helen Chu with the University of Washington. Thank you, doctor. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. It's always nice to talk to you.